All right, so um, welcome uh, again. Uh, I'm John Edmiston. I'm the applicant and reservist manager. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the Community Living Campaign, which is the organization, the nonprofit under which SF Reserve operates. It's a program of the Community Living Campaign. Um, uh, today, we're going to talk about, as I said, the Community Living Campaign, our values, what is the reserve program, how we recruit applicants, and how we partner with nonprofits and small businesses, how we have adapted and are continuing to adapt to this changing environment, and how we uh, plan to continue to grow the program. Um, Community Living Campaign was founded uh, about 14 years ago, a small group of activists um, who really wanted to make San Francisco a better place for uh, older adults and people with disabilities. Um, basically, it was to help people um, age in place, stay in their homes, and develop more uh, sense of community, get to socialize with their neighbors, get to know their neighbors. Uh, and that's where the origins of the Community Living Campaign is. Um, we do a lot of programs. Um, we have the Community Connectors program in about nine different neighborhoods throughout San Francisco. We have uh, computer skills, uh, classes on Zoom, all kinds of them. We do advocacy work and uh, the reserve program is basically one that helps to bridge the gap um, and provides a, a certain amount of economic security for older adults and people with disabilities. Um, you can see community empowerment advocacy are like the cornerstones of the community living campaign and SF Reserve fits under senior and disability employment. Um, the key things we like to, to think uh, we are helping with is achieving basic financial security. That's number one but also ending isolation and loneliness, especially during this past year and a half or so when people suddenly found themselves isolating in place and maybe alone, maybe with no other family members or friends. Um, we wanna contribute to people living in a home that enhances dignity and really building communities that value fairness, equity, and justice. Um, we do support the Black Lives Matter movement and our board of directors uh, very early on uh, last year um, started developing programs and uh, really trying to see how community living campaign could contribute to the equity and social justice movement um, that we're all a part of. And the full statement can be found on our website. We are funded through DOS, the Department of Disability and Aging Services. Um, out of the somewhere around 880,000 residents in San Francisco, nearly a quarter of them are at risk of not meeting their basic needs, uh, not only in housing, but in food and health services and other supporting services. So DOS helps bridge the gap between those services and what people need. And Reserve is one of those bridges that helps to provide economic security to seniors and adults with uh, disabilities. As you can see, the population of San Francisco, fully 20% of the residents of San Francisco are over 60. Um, that's quite a large number. And that number continues to grow. As a matter of fact, the percentage is growing. Um, many want to work and contribute to their communities. And um, we have had to do some real adaptation over these past uh, year plus. Uh, to adapt to a post-COVID-19 world. And let me just say today is a very happy day, I think, for, for many of us. For the first time, we can go out and act somewhat normally, not wear a mask uh, out on the streets. We can go to a restaurant. We can visit with our friends and families because everyone was so good about wearing a mask and social isolation and getting the vaccine. So today is a real, um, a real terrific day to be doing this program because things are really looking up. So SF Reserve is uh, it's a, an affiliate of the National Reserve Program that does pretty much the same thing, matches older adults and adults with disabilities with organizations that need um, part-time employees. 
So uh, we don't do it exactly like the national program, which is all based on the East Coast. Uh, we're San Francisco after all, we do things a little differently. We may disassociate ourselves from the national program. Um, and uh, so that we may have a name change coming up sometime this year, but that's, that's not for sure. Um, but um, basically it's to uh, help seniors, people who are 60 plus, who have a lifetime of experience doing all kinds of jobs and put those skills and experiences to benefit nonprofit organizations and small businesses. We work uh, as part of the Work Matters Coalition. Uh, SF Reserve leads the coalition. And there are four organizations that are part of the coalition, as you can see here. Um, and they all have a slightly different constituency. Some are training programs and include training. Um, Reserve is not a training program. We work with folks who are basically job ready. Um, jobs Now has just increased the income requirements uh, or decreased, I should say. So if you're making less than 300% of the federal poverty level, you're eligible for their uh, services. And also, also the Positive Resource Center is our newest member of the coalition. Uh, they also provide training. So, Reservists come from all walks of life. Um, we have people who have done teaching, social work, we've got CEOs, we've got lawyers, um, we've got a very diverse group of uh, constituents that speak many different languages, uh, which is a good thing because San Francisco, I think there are about 112 different languages spoken in San Francisco and almost 50%, about 45% of people in San Francisco speak a language other than English at home. So uh, we sort of meet you where you live. Um, the newest uh, addition to our team is the Partnership Development Associate. She will be doing outreach to the nonprofits and helping create new jobs uh, for us. We negotiate regional hourly rates for, uh, with our partners. And the very minimum is $17.05 an hour. That is the absolute minimum for nonprofits. Um, but uh, recently we placed someone uh, in a position that's going to pay $30 an hour. So there's quite a range. Um, it's usually 10 to 15 hours per week and it's part-time and the hours are flexible in that you, if you are placed in a position and the, your supervisor, whoever that might be, will decide what your hours are gonna be, what days you're gonna work and all of that sort of stuff. So it's quite flexible. Um, I've just added this slide um, because we always get questions about benefits. So if you are on SSI or SSDI, it is possible that earning too much income could impact those benefits. We really wanna make sure that that doesn't happen. So um, your income can be uh, impacted if it's more than you estimated, uh, if you have more resources than you're allowed. For instance, if you get a job and start getting income that puts you over the cap, I will say it's quite uh, rare that it would happen uh, based on the amount of money that you would be paid for 10 to 15 hours a week. It is unlikely that that would impact your benefits, but uh, we can't make any advice around that. So uh, you'll be getting this deck um, later. And these uh, links here are to um, some great sites by the government that can explain some of the issues around SSI and SSDI benefits and how working might impact them. I also have, I just got, it was too late for me to include it in the, uh, in the deck, but there is a, um, a deck that is specifically addressing SSI and SSDI benefits when you're working with a number of different scenarios. And I've asked Lori and Angela to send that to all of you uh, after the presentation is over. So uh, that should answer pretty much uh, any questions you might have about that. So uh, the pandemic has certainly changed the way we live and work. Um, before the pandemic, uh, I would go to the office every day. I would meet applicants in the office in person and have interviews. Um, we'd fill out paper forms. Uh, you would fill out paper forms. 
I would scan them and attach them to your profile. Now everything is pretty much done online. I interview via Zoom uh, and other uh, media like that. Um, but what we learned uh, was that many people did not have, obviously they did not have their own computers. They might not have internet access. They previously would have accessed the internet through places like the San Francisco Public Library and their uh, bank of computers. Um, so they could get their email, they could connect to their friends and family. Uh, and that all went away with the pandemic for many people. So we have been working on not only providing laptops and tablets, but providing training and internet service for people who don't have them. So uh, if you are interested in something like that, or you have friends who might be interested in something like that, you can contact me afterwards. My contact information will be up here later and see if we can't get them hooked up with something like that if they qualify. So uh, yeah, this is just something about what I was talking about. We do have training. Um, we've been giving out computers and tablets pretty regularly now for several months and the program is starting to become very well. Uh, it, it's working very well and very smoothly. Excuse my dogs. Um, so we do keep it um, simple. We have a uh, what we call a third party uh, vendor of choice. They handle all our HR uh, things like um, direct deposit, your paychecks, um, all that kind of thing. So um, it makes it very simple for us and for the nonprofit and for you. We keep hiring simple. Um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the, um, the process. Um, these are some of the skills that are most in demand, but it's not an exhaustive list. Um, these are just the things that are uh, that usually rise to the top when we're actually looking for um, work. And <clears throat> excuse me. So the way it works is we get your resume and you fill out a couple of forms with your skills and experience that we put into our database. When we get a new job description, we also have them do it in a certain way so that we can do a search for people that have the skills that they're looking for and come up with folks who then uh, would, would match those skills and then send their resumes off to the hiring managers if they're interested. So we have a pretty good track record. Um, most 90% uh, or more of uh, F SF reserve organizations and reservists are highly satisfied with their placements. I uh, have actually, um, and it was a surprise, didn't expect this, a um, current reservist who has been working with reserve longer than I have. Her name is Carolyn Gage, and she has agreed to say a few words about her experience with reserve. So Carolyn, if you would like to unmute yourself and um, give a little bit uh, uh, of your experience with SF Reserve and I can continue to catch my breath. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, Carolyn, you, your side has a lot of feedback. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if other people are hearing the feedback or yeah, it's just me. No, I hear it. You can hear yeah. me? Yeah, a lot of feedback from your side. Maybe, um, can John, um, can you continue your presentation? Maybe, Car Carolyn, you can work on the audio on your computer, please. Yeah, okay. Okay, sorry okay. about that. These are some of our partners. Um, you may be familiar with some of them. Um, PRC, I mentioned earlier. The Felton Institute is where the um, uh, CSEP program is housed. That's the Senior Community Service Employment Program. Children's Council, League of Women Voters, uh, we have reservists there. Um, San Francisco Interfaith Council, um, Little Brothers, Friends of the Elderly. So we have, uh, and Senior Disability Action is, is another one of our longtime um, partners where a number of reservists work. So here's uh, how it works. Um, I'm going to focus on the job seekers side of this because I think that's most of the audience here today. Um, 
So you, one way or another, I get your resume. Now you can send it to us through our website, which you can see the link here, or you can send it to me directly as an attachment. Um, there are any number of ways to get uh, information to me. You can give me a phone call and we'll figure out uh, how to do that. And once I have your resume, I'll create a, um, uh, uh, a profile for you in our system. And then I'll schedule a, a call probably on Zoom if we can, so I can get to know you a little bit and you can get to know me. We can talk about what you're looking for, the kinds of things you want. Um, and um, then we try to match you up with a job that matches your interests. So I stay with you pretty much the whole time. Even once you're placed, I'll be your contact with Reserve. Um, and uh, I'm always available via um, email uh, and texting. So um, as I say, I, we get to know you, I meet you, we talk, and then I try to make the best placement for you and connect you with uh, employers. Once you are hired, you make an offer, then I help you through the process of being onboarded with, as I mentioned earlier, our third party uh, vendor who will handle payroll and all the other HR functions. Uh, this is my good friend, Sherry Sawyer. She's one of my colleagues. She works with the Community Living Campaign. Um, she is a great resource. We are continuing to adapt the program all the time. It is not a, a static organization or a program. Um, times are changing very quickly. And we're going to be, uh, uh, just today, as a matter of fact, I learned of a job that is, um, had been on hold for a long time. I think maybe I mentioned this earlier and now they're opening it up and some person will be able to get a job if they are willing to work on site. And many people are actually dying to get out and work and see people again. So um, this is my contact information. I'm John, uh, Sheila McElroy is our new partnership development associate and Jamie Goddard is the director of the program. I'll leave this contact information up for now if anybody wants to write anything down, but you will be getting a copy of this deck uh, following the presentation. And I'm wondering now if Carolyn um, has addressed your sound. Yes, uh, is it better now? Still, no, it's still kind of no. fuzzy. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I don't yeah. know what's wrong. It wasn't like that earlier when you were first on, but I don't know what's happened. I don't know either. Uh, per perhaps we can do it next time. <laughs> yeah, sorry. so Carolyn, if you yeah. come back next time and we'll figure out what's going on. But okay. um, now I'd like to open it up to questions that uh, anyone has. And do I need to do anything to allow people to unmute or somebody? Uh, I, I, we have some question in the chat. Oh, I can read okay. them out and then we can uh, allow people to unmute themselves and ask question directly. Okay. Uh, the question we got it's from uh, Konzi. Um, he asked, does SF Reserve work with other cities like Vallejo and or Oakland? Uh, no, our funding comes from San Francisco. So we can only work with residents of San Francisco. We can refer to some similar types of organizations. There's nothing exactly like us in the East Bay or the South Bay or Marin. Um, but our, the people who we um, connect with jobs uh, have to be San Francisco residents. Got it. A question, question from uh, Jess. Um, you have to be 60 if you are 58. Um, it's the only option um, to go through Fountain and or uh, SISAP. Uh, uh -huh. If you are living with a disability, there is the age requirement is only 18. You can be a, an adult of any age. Um, otherwise, uh, you need to be 60. But we do refer be between organizations. So um, if you came to us and you're not living with this disability and you're not 60, we can refer you uh, directly to uh, CSEP or some of the other programs, Jobs Now. Um, uh, and PRC, um, and there are some requirements that we, you know, you have to have an ID available, a few little basic things like that, but um, we can make referrals for you. Does that answer the question? Uh, 
Jess, does it answer your question? Oh, uh, he actually has a follow up. Um, I think uh, he is uh, 58 with no disability. Um, so could he come through you? Yeah, you can contact me and then we'll um, see what the correct referral would be for you. Okay, thank you. Um, another question, can we find jobs uh, with more than 15 hours weekly? We, in rare cases, Reserve does um, work with partners who want more hours, you know, 20 uh, is usually the outer limit, but most of the time it's gonna be 10 to 15 hours. Some of the, now uh, jobs now uh, has people who are looking for maybe 30 hours or more. Um, a lot of uh, uh, adults 60 and older don't really want to get a 30 or 40 hour a week job anymore. Um, so uh, although it's possible that we can refer you to another agency if you're looking for more full time or more work than 10 to 15 hours a week. Got it. Another question. Um, do you refer if I am temporarily disabled? What do you mean refer? I, I guess that uh, will you accept uh, um, her as a um, participant of the SF Reserve uh, program? If, oh, yes, if absolutely. He, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, many people have temporary disabilities due to injuries or illness or something like that. So that, that's perfectly fine. And we also, uh, we don't ask for any documentation around your disability. We don't ask you to name your disability, anything like that. You tell us you're living with a disability. Um, that's, that's all we need. There is no uh, proof requirements for any, or anything like that. Thank you. I don't see other question. Um, maybe if um, any participant would like to unmute themselves, um, you can unmute and ask a um, question directly. Yes. Um, good afternoon. Good John, this is Eve. Hi, Eve. Hi. Um, I have a question slash concern. Uh, if someone is selected for employment, are the earnings um, exempt or uh, by the U.S. Labor Department or not, please? And I'm making reference to the CSEP program. So I, I don't want, I don't know what you mean by exempt. The the money that you earn mm -hmm. through working with reserve is um, taxed. Uh, yes. Is at a lower rate than if you were working for a full time for profit company. But the vendor, when you get paid, all your FICA taxes and Social Security and all that is is taken out. Well, what I meant by that mm -hmm. is through the U.S. Labor Department or. For example, if one is living in um, a, with a federal housing program, their earnings do not have to be reported as income. Uh, no, I think uh, I think income must be reported. Okay. I can look that up, but I yeah. I believe okay. that income has to be reported yeah. at least as far as SSI and SSDI. You know. Housing? Yeah, I, I'm not I, sure. Sorry. Yes, I understand, you know, the federal withholdings, mm -hmm. but um, I, I'll just um, contact Eve, if you, you want to contact, I know you yeah, have my contact, contact information and yeah. you want to contact me offline, then sure, no I, can, I can do some research for you. All righty. Thank you. Okay. Sure thing. John, I, I see two more questions coming through chat. Uh, first question is, how do you differ from CSEP? Uh, CSEP is more of a training program. So they, if you're accepted into the program, um, then there are um, classes and trainings that you take. And once this pandemic is, has ended a little more, they place you in um, positions with government agencies and other organizations so that you can 
develop your skills, um, get better at the various things you're interested, a lot of administrative work that way. Um, with the end goal of getting you full-time employment following the training, you can stay with CSEP up to four years and they try to give you a number of different placements so that you build your skills. And there's lots of classes and training involved with that. So CSEP is a little different model because um, Reserve tries to place you somewhere that you'll be happy to stay in for as long as you feel like working. Whereas CSEP is more of a training program where you work for different organizations uh, and uh, hone your skills, improve your skills. And, and by the end of your training, you uh, and they help you get placement with a permanent position. Thank you, John. Uh, next question. I, I think you probably answered this question. Uh, where are the jobs located? Is it all in San Francisco? Um, during the pandemic, because everything was remote, we had a few jobs outside of San Francisco. We had some in the East Bay, but you didn't have to commute to the East Bay. You could do the job, even though the organization was based there, you would be doing the work from home. Um, and I believe those jobs will continue. But I, I think for the most part, the organizations we'll be working with will be um, headquartered here in San Francisco or we'll have an, uh, an office or even at least just a mailing address in San Francisco. Uh, thank you, John. Um, oh, uh, Car Carolyn uh, said that um, she apologized for sound difficulty. As a reserve, it's a great opportunity with a fantastic support team. The challenges have been um, good in securities, teleology challenges, and, env and environmental for seniors. Uh, there are tablets available for visual impaired. Um, <laughs> yeah, she's not able to um, to share, um, but she, uh, her experience, you know, um, uh, directly. But she put it in the chat. Share um, with us how great an opportunity um, as a reserve is. Thanks, Carolyn. And that's a good point. I didn't mention uh, we do have um, uh, laptops or tablets that are designed for folks who have um, visual impairments. Uh, um, so that's a that's a good thing for Carolyn to have brought up. Thank you. I don't see any other questions in chat. Again, if you want to ask your question directly, you can unmute yourself. All right. Sounds like no further questions. So we can return. 25 minutes to your day uh, that you may have set aside. Thank you everybody for being a part uh, of the presentation. Um, Lori and Angela will be sending you this deck so you'll have my contact information. Feel free to uh, shoot me an email. Um, the phone number that you see listed for community living campaign, um, it, it works, but it's a, it's a rather odd system where the phone doesn't actually ring, it goes directly to voicemail. And then I get an email saying they've got a voicemail, if you can believe that. Um, so it takes a little longer. So uh, the fastest way to get a hold of me is through email. Thank you, John. Right, I, I, see, I see a question here uh, from uh, Lauren. Um, she need help doing a resume. Um, is there a possibility in person for that? Not yet. Um, but now that we are reopening, um, we're looking at how we can open up our offices again. We used to have a, a computer lab. We're gonna have to reconfigure the office space um, to meet the uh, requirements. But I think if everyone is vaccinated, um, then uh, that'll be a lot easier for us. And we, we, we do plan to reopen the office and then we, we did have in-person help with, with resumes um, at that time. So we'll, we'll look to be having that again. But uh, also uh, just a shout out for the public library. They're having uh, that resume writing and review uh, service available. Um, I think 
that even is tomorrow, isn't it, Lori? Uh, yes, tomorrow at 12, we have a resume yeah. writing workshop. And then if you have your resume um, already draft, you can also use our um, Brainfuse Job Now service, upload your resume, and someone will re review your resume and uh, give you feedback within 24 hours. So you can, yeah, try both. Come to the workshop tomorrow and yeah. also try the Brainfuse um, uh, service. And we'll be making announcements about our offices reopening. Some folks have started coming back to the office, um, but right now we're in sort of a transition phase, so I can't really say what, you know, what dates we'll be opening to um, to applicants. When we'll have those kinds of services in person, we do plan to have them, but but we don't really have a date for that yet. Thank you, John, and right. thank, you. Uh, thank you, Carolyn. Uh, we really appreciate um, you taking the time to share with us um, the as a reserve program and your experience as a um, reservist. And thank you everyone for joining the program. I hope you find the presentation informative and helpful to you. Um, we'll be sending out evaluation survey together with the sli slide deck and link to the recording for today. Um, please uh, give us your feedback so we can continue to improve. Um, again, thank you everybody and have a wonderful rest of the day. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.